वेलकम टू वीटीयु शिक्षण प्रोग्राम ऐम प्रोफेसर प्रकाश फ्रम द नाशनल इंस्टिट्यूट आफ् इंजीनियरी मैसूर इन द लास्ट क्लास वी वर् डिस्कसिंग अबउट प्रेजर कंट्रोल रिटेड निमाटिक सर्क्यूट अंड टाइम डिपेडेंट निमाटिक सर्क्यूट नौ स्लोली इन दिस क्लास वी विल मूव टूवर्ड्स कोआर्डिनेटेड मोशन कंट्रोल how in pneumatics multiple cylinders are being used in different applications and uh, how those kinds of circuits can be developed uh, will be discussed today uh, we will uh, start with the coordinated motion control today so in majority of pneumatic applications more than one cylinder is used it may be a two cylinder application or three cylinder application so however more than one cylinders are used in many cases when we take the industry examples the moment of these cylinders are coordinated as per the required sequence means first we have to move a cylinder a and then b some motions forward reverse re re depending upon the application sequence that we are uh, in need of so we have to Uh, create a sequence within the circuit part so that we can achieve that application as per the requirement and the activation of the limit switches of different cylinders will provide uh, a set or reset signals to the control valve final control element so we use us here normally a limit switches to give signals to the valves to change its status as per the requirements so further controlling of the moment of various cylinders are executed the limit switches have to be arranged in proper location why we specifically say here is proper location is we normally mount these cylinders along the cylinder uh, axis so so that when the cylinder starts moving forward and reverse it presses the respective uh, limit switches so that we can automatically execute the motion of the cylinders so this is the thing this is a subject which is more or less low cost automation area so here we try to reduce the manual operation so we are going to use some elements like limit switches so which are being uh, used as a signal sensing elements automatically on the cylinders okay so with the help of these motions we can do whatever the required things uh, as per the re requirement now before we understand so we have to understand what is a motion diagram it is a, a a term which you need to understand motion diagram sometimes motion diagram step displacement diagram they say so this is a, a diagram which which uh, shows you how the each cylinder has behaved or moved like that so now in order to develop control circuit for multi cylinder operations it is necessary to draw means preferably we instruct everybody to draw the motion diagram first you can ask a question why sir can't we do it directly you can do but this type of uh, drawing the displacement diagrams will help you to recognize your steps of sequences in a proper manner so we always prefer to tell you please create your own sequential and displacement diagram as per the application sequence so uh, various signal input limit switches and the sensors that we use can be incorporated in this so and motion diagram represents status of the cylinder so this is very very important cylinder position whether it is in extended or retracted in the particular step so now i will just brief this how you can recognize this consider now uh, a cylinder uh, is here there are two cylinders this is one cylinder and this is the another cylinder 1a1 and 2a1 kinds of thing if you take now how this we are trying to understand is 
the cylinder first cylinder will starts moving forward. So, once it executes a forward that is from here 0 to 2 when we move. So, during that time the cylinder 2 is not moving. So, now the cylinder 1 will be in rest will make that in the forward condition. So, means this is this is already forwarded. So, now we keep this in forward direction, forward position and then act the second cylinder and we move forward in the second cylinder also. So, means for the forward we have taken this graph, this is the representation of the forward motion of the cylinders. So, now at uh, position 3 we have uh, reached even second cylinder that is B cylinder is also been moved forward. We stop that there and then we try to retract the cylinder 1 back, cylinder 1 back and during the period of this, so we are making the cylinders 2 in a stationary conditions, we keep the cylinder 2 stationary. So, now further we keep the cylinder 1 constant and then retract the cylinder 2, that is how a particular sequence has been taken as an example case here, this, this may change depending upon your application and depending upon how your sequence in the application will require. Okay. So, that is how we can take, this is how we can represent and now if you draw this, you can easily solve any problems, try to solve the uh, signal diagram also along with the motion diagram. So, signal diagrams means how the uh, electrical signals that you are providing to the system is being behaving. So, means it has been high or low, kept high, kept low like that. In combination with the displacement diagram and the signal diagrams, you can clearly understand any critical motion, uh, sequential motions within the cylinders. Now, let us uh, take multi cylinder applications more commonly used is uh, two cylinders applications in many applications we use two cylinders, but also we use a three cylinder applications in little bit of complex circuits in one of the robotics and uh, material moment cases. Uh, I have uh, designed a three cylinder sequencing also, but beyond the three cylinders we do not suggest then we may ask the uh, customer to go for a, a robot instead of creating such motions using multiple cylinders because you are using the multiple cylinders, multiple signals, complexity has been raised and uh, you are trying to solve. Okay, it is a good, it is a low cost method, but if you keep on increasing the number of cylinders and making your sequence, the system becomes more and more complex in nature. So, at 3 cylinders we said now it is enough, if, if you really want you can use it, but we restrict instead of doing this go for a robotic applications. So, bring in a robot, articulated kinds of robot or any kinds of robot to execute your particular motions within the desired length or you try to go with an FMS concept, so that you can easily solve better with a minimal problems. So, now with the beginning I will start telling about the two cylinders application A and B. So, now let us now consider there are input signals and output signals. So, and we consider two cylinders, cylinder A and cylinder B. So, suppose if you want to have a kind of motion we need to use limit switches, it may be a roller limit switches or sensors in, came in some cases. So, however, to create an automatic signals of forward and retraction, we need to use either limit switches or sensors. So, I will be discussing those now, limit switch at home position is referred to as A naught 
and limit switch at the home position A1 for cylinder A, uh, limit switch at home position B0 and B1. So, in total we are saying A0, A1, B0, B1. So, because we want to execute a forward and retraction means there are two signals which are required from a particular cylinder, from a single cylinder. So, 2 plus 2 totally we have a 4 limit switches now in this case, 4 limit switches. So, now if you use these 4 signal elements like limit switches, what are all that the sequences that you can generate? So, just as an example case only, this may change as per your usage of the limit switches. But however, for an example case, we can say cylinder A advancing step is through A plus, which is also referred to as A plus, means cylinder A is moving forward now, we call them as A plus. And cylinder A, after a moment, it pushes and come back. For example, a material has been pushed and cylinder is retracting back. So, then A plus A minus. So, for the cylinder B, now the cylinder B is advancing, is referred to as B plus and it advances and moves back. So, we have a, uh, this is sorry, this is B minus, this is a B minus. So, you can just take like that and create your different kinds of uh, signals and their designated motions as A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus like this. So, now, yes, we have now understood we have to use a end element that is a actuator. So, here we have a more than one actuators and as the number of actuators are there two, so we need to use the signaling elements here they are, that is nothing but the limit switches. And for a particular cylinder, uh, in order to have forward and retractive signals, we need two limit switches. So, all these I am saying in words, so the same thing has to be put on a paper kind of thing as a sketch. So, that how the cylinders are being designated when we start talking about the sequencing of cylinders. So, I will just represent that how the designation of the singles are given. So, your uh, source is here, triangular is represented as an air source and air source is given to now, we are directly taking the control, final control part here. Okay. So, here for cylinder A, for cylinder A, I am, I am taking this, I am taking this, for cylinder B, I am taking this. However, I am using 2 plus 2 4 limit switches for cylinder A I use a limit switch, limit switch A naught and A 1 they are roller limit switches and for cylinder B I will use B naught and B 1 two limit switches again. So, I try to use these limit switches and mount this on the in line with the cylinder so that they can automatically work the particular sequence as per requirements. So, now uh, this is the end actuator element with a connections provided to the control element. As you know the control element is a 5 by 2 set reset valve. So, with a set and reset signals. So, that means we have two cylinders, four limit switches, two control valves. So, this is how the final uh, layer of the circuit will look like for you. So, this is how we designate it on the paper. So, now in the sequential motion of cylinders, so we have a many possibilities. So, the normally general possibilities of taking different sequence are shown in this slide. So, possible sequence of operations that we call it as a possible sequence of operations. So, possible sequence are A plus B plus 
a minus b minus. What is the meaning of this? Cylinder A will move forward, move forward that means cylinder B again moves forward. So, when I when we talk this A plus B plus cylinder B uh, forwards and then cylinder A retracts, then cylinder B retracts. So, forward of A, forward of B, retraction of A, retraction of B. So, this is how we can say the sequence. So, if I say this sequence, normally what are the applications which are related to this in the industry when you compare these kinds of sequence, what are the applications which are desirable or which can be made within the industry requirements. There are many applications. So, just uh, we have only, I had only given one or two examples to you to make you understand. So, the first example may be lifting and shifting means you are lifting the part and shifting it into an another direction. So, means again to lift one cylinder you want, to shift you want an another cylinder, but these two cylinder has to work in sequence. The sequence is cylinder A is lifting okay, and B is pushing, B is pushing and then after the push. A is retracting and then B retracting. So, that, that is why we can say one of the applications of this sequence is lifting and shifting, not necessarily a single application. When we have such a sequencing circuits, there can be a multiple applications to it. The second example may be shifting of parts in two directions. You want to push it in this and this kinds of thing. So, push and then push it to the 90 degrees, you want to push a part. So, then also it is a, a directional change in the part has to be made. So, you need a two direction, two cylinders here. So, again we can use a similar kind of sequence to do that kinds of applications. Now, for example, now if the sequence changes, now we worked with this sequence and there are many example cases, I had given two examples. Now, if we change the sequence using these two cylinders, so how do we can change? So, if this is the question, so we can change in this fashion also A plus that means cylinder A advances, so cylinder B advances, the cylinder B retracts, see the change here. Here we were retracting the cylinder B at the end. Here we are retracting the cylinder B immediately after the work has been done by the second cylinder. And now at the last we are retracting the cylinder A. So, the sequence this is comparatively different from this. So, if you observe this they are having a some differences. So, as you know now if such kind of differences are there, for an example, which are the applications which can come in the second sequence what I have discussed. The one example for is clamping and stamping. You are clamping an object and stamping on it. So, in such applications, first you need to move the, uh, keep the part on the table and move the cylinder and clamp the cylinder. So, once you clamp, the next is you have to uh, bring in a press kinds of device which can do a stamping process on the part. And once the stamping is done, so what happens? Stamping cylinder will go back and then at the end you will be retracting the cylinder A. Similarly, you can also take one more example as clamping and riveting. So, these kinds of lots of industrial applications can be configured using the second sequence which we have discussed now. Now, is there any other possibilities? Yes, we can also have other combinations like this. In the last one, I have showed you can have a A plus, A plus that means cylinder A advances, then cylinder B ret uh, A retracts, A retracts, cylinder 
B advances and cylinder B retracts. So, this is also one good combination of sequence that, that we can create and if you relate some application to this feeding and ejection of parts. So, you are feeding the parts onto the die for a pressing or something like that. So, then so you have fed the part finished. So, A plus and come back and then after feeding you come back. So, you are feeding the part onto the die assembly you move back and then press will press will move down and do its work and then go back. So, this is how uh, the one more combination like feeding and ejection of parts is also a one such example. You are feeding and then ejecting. Okay? So, this is how different configurations has been developed in the industry side to create your uh, low cost automation circuits using two cylinder circuits. So, now with this basic idea, now we can move on to a uh, few example cases so that you can understand how different methodologies are being used in the sequencing. Now, take the first case study. So, in the first case study, we have discussed about lifting and shifting. In the example, what I have showed, we have said lifting and shifting, lifting and shifting. So, as I said, in the lifting and shifting, what you are trying to do? So, you have a cylinder A and cylinder B. The cylinder A is moving forward and pushing the part to this upper conveyor and once this has been moved up, so this will be, the, uh, it will be in that position and this will push the part down. So, it is a gravity conveyor which is given to that process to move, only pushing is done by the cylinder B. So, once the part is moved down to the gravity conveyor, so there is no load here. So, then we can uh, take the combination like this A minus and B minus. So, means you can retract your cylinder A back and you can retract this back and then you can retract this back. So, this is how uh, this sequential applications are being mounted in a proper manner within the industry. It also needs a proper mounting of cylinders. See here, the conveyors are designed like this and the cylinders are mounted here. So, with the cylinder mounting techniques what we have discussed in the previous chapter. So, we can make use of that to achieve our desired motion. So, desired motion can be angular or a linear to a certain extent, but rotary is done with rotary actuators. So, now with this, so if you take this case, for example, I have told you in multi cylinders operation, please use the uh, motion diagram, motion step diagram and signaling diagram in combination that will ease your work. So, the same way we have shown such such a diagram how to write it here. If you observe this now, if you observe this now, so this is a, if you observe this diagram, I will just show you the motion and control diagram showing the lifting and shifting application in which A plus B plus A minus B minus is executed. Signals are now this part, this part is referred to as signals, this one from here to here. So, this is a signal, this we call it as a signal and this we call it as a motion, motion. So, motion and signal diagram in combination. So, now what are the signals? So, signals are 1.2 is a start signal. So, that has been shown here. So, which is giving a signal to start this. So, that in turn takes your cylinder 
a in forward a in the forward direction. So, now 1.3 extended uh, extended position of limit switch of the cylinder B. Okay? So, that is this one 1.3 this shows that this is the extended position of the cylinder B this is what this is how you can relate. So, now A is already extended here and then we are extending the cylinder B. So, we are extending the cylinder B. Extending the cylinder B is done through with signaling here and that is being executed. This is the extended of the 3 cylinder to 1.3 is the that one. So, now during this time, now next signal is retraction of the cylinder A, retraction of the cylinder A. So, that is your this home position limit switch for the cylinder A 2.3. Okay? We are trying to bring back the cylinder to its home position. So, like we can in combination we can relate the signals in a particular levels. So, that is why this has been taken like this in a in line. So, in line to designate so this understanding of motion diagram and a sequence diagram. So, if you draw checks like this and draw your motion diagram and signals diagram, you will be knowing your signals and you will be knowing your position of the actuators exactly. So, that enables you to understand the total process clearly and design as per the requirement. So, now, now we have discussed about motion and uh, signal diagram, how to write for a particular sequence of signal. So, now we will move on to development of the circuit for these kinds of application. So, now if you take a, if you take this signals, so there are two cylinders, four limit switches are required and these limit switches are to be arranged in order to get the sequence of what we are discussing that is A plus B plus A minus B minus Me means you have to fix up the limit switches in such a manner that you get the signals A plus B plus A minus B minus motion you have to get it on the cylinder. So, now I will take how you can configure such a circuit. So, normally as you know. Uh, air source is there that that is shown in the triangular this this is the one okay and then filter regulator unit is there frl unit what we call it as frl unit and a line common line from the common line from this common line you take multiple lines like this multiple lines like this Okay. And as I told there are four signaling elements which are placed in different fashion here. If you, if you observe how they are placed you can concentrate here. So, they are placed in different fashion along the cylinder. Okay. So, now before that an op
Yeah, as I said, uh, motion diagram and signal diagram for lifting and shifting operation has been showed here. So, has been showed here in this diagram, which is a combination of motion and signal diagram. So, now if you observe this, where is the motion diagram and from where the signal diagram, this is the signal diagram this is the signal diagram and this is the motion diagram. So, motion diagram plus signal diagram are being combined. So, this kinds of combination will enable you to understand the sequence and the signals clearly. So, that you are knowing your process of automation, your process of automation and your signals. So, it is easy for you to design and maintain or no check the problems also. So, I always suggest draw the motion diagram and signal diagram. For example, if you take a plus a plus b plus a minus b minus. So, as I said in the previous thing cylinder a will forward and uh, it remains in that condition, but here it will forward and then we are forwarding the cylinder b during this period cylinder A remains in the forward position and then cylinder A retracts at the time cylinder B is stationary, it is in the forwarded condition and now the cylinder B retracts and the cylinder A will be in, in its home position. So, this is how the different uh, circuit motions can be drawn using the motion diagram. Now, what are the respective signals for the each one? The start signal is this, for example, if you take start signal. So, 1.2 is a start signal. So, what is that? It is giving a signal to start the, for the cylinder A to start. So, like here we can say 1.3 is an extended position of B. So, and 2.2 .2 is an extended position of A. And this is again uh, forward motion of the uh, cylinder B, uh, uh, retraction motion, sorry, okay. Like that, we can have a link between this and this. We can have a link between this and this. So, when we have a complete link established like that, you can understand your sequence easily. Now, you have you have drawn your motion diagram and signal diagrams. Now, it is the next step is to develop a suitable circuits for these kinds of application. You have seen motion and signal diagram. Now, I in the next slide, I will show how to design a circuit for such motion. So, our application motion requirement is lifting and shifting for which we need uh, that is cylinder A to move forward and then cylinder if you observe this cylinder B should move forward then cylinder A should retract and then cylinder B should retract. So, this is the motion requirement. So, as you know now there are two cylinders here the one we call it as a cylinder A and the other one is cylinder B place these two cylinders and you know now there are four signaling elements. So, roller type of limit switches they are your this 1, 2, 3 and 4 signaling elements. Apart from this to start the process you need to have a start push button start PB. So, now I will connect all of these elements to a pneumatic source. Source is represented by a triangle and this is an FRL unit. Take one line and take input to all the valves, all the three valves here 
and for one wall that is at the starting starting wall starting wall so we have to use a start pb in line with this so now i'll take the signal to one of this one one port number one of this 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 so all the things so and then connect the other lines as shown in the figure so now the how we have placed here so the cylinder limit switch b not is placed here in this circuit b1 is placed in the second line and a1 is given in the third line and a not is given in the fourth line why we have given like this when we give like this how the these valves are mounted on the cylinder side so this is the one thing the student has to learn so now take a not as a limit switch for the cylinder a in its home position and a1 for forward signal of the cylinder a b is the home position of the cylinder b and b1 is forward motion of the cylinder b signal for the forward motion of the cylinder b so now if you observe this now if you observe this now how this works i'll just show you initially this cylinder will be like this when you push the uh, start pb like this you are going to connect 1 to 2 here 1 to 2 here and that gives a supply to your uh, this valve air will come here and also your air can go to all these lines directly na? so that line is coming here so now as uh, this is uh, like this the here the air signals are being reached now so now a naught initially we take a naught a naught is pressed because the cylinder a is in its retracted or the home position means it automatically this presses this in its starting point so when it gives like this so uh, a naught a naught will be pressed and that will give that will move start moving from there and hits a1 hits a1 when a1 gets pressed by the roller so this gets pressed so you have to understand the pressing signals are given like this it will be represented like this so when you give a start button so already b naught is at its back so you will be giving an air supply to this air supply to this understand the signal now i will repeat this signal for you you have to understand this particularly now the air is at this position like this so now as we press this this is already b naught is at its retracted position home positions are this and this so we are passing on the air to this side and that in in turn gets connected to like this so when we connect it like this this cylinder gets a air here and that moves the cylinder forward means initially a naught was pressed okay and that leaves there and goes and hits the a so this gets pressed so this gets pressed so when this gets pressed a a1 is pressed uh, a1 is pressed so you are going to press this you are going to press this so air can connect to this port air can connect to this port so again the position gets changed here you are connecting this way you are connecting this way so the air enters this path and your air supply goes to the cylinder here cylinder b here so now your, your cylinder b gets air and uh, this side gets connected to the van so you get a forward motion of the cylinder b so 
forward motion of the cylinder B you get. So, that means we have now done A plus and B plus, we have done A plus and B plus. Now, we have to achieve A minus. So, we have to achieve A minus. So, A minus means when we, uh, when this goes and hits the B1 sensor. So, where is the B1? B1 is here. We have kept the B1 in this line. So, when the B1 gets pressed, if this is gets pressed, the air gets connected from here to here and the air will go to this side, 1 to port of the valve 1. So, and it resets and it, uh, uh, the valve moves back to the normal position allowing the air to the this side. So, this side air will go and this side gets connected to the vent. So, this makes a retracted motion. So, the third is this is your first, we have done second, now we are doing third one, third sequence. Okay? The third is with this. So, this is the third. So, this is the third. So, now third uh, means you have done uh, as per this, this A minus you have done, A minus you have done. Now, lastly you have to achieve B minus. So, B minus is you have to retract this back. So, you have to get this back. So, for which uh, you will be uh, passing the air, uh, that means it will hit the B1, B1 will move. So, this is done and now again uh, A naught, A naught is here. So, this gets pressed and air will move to this port again and this we cancel. So, the position gets changed here, the position gets changed here, the air will move to this path okay? and this side gets connected to the vent, this side gets connected to the vent that results in the B minus. So, that means what we have done is A plus a plus first and then B plus, B plus and then A minus, so that is this A minus, A minus and then lastly we did a B minus. So, sequentially we arrange the rollers on the cylinder side and we try to get that pressed automatically as the sequence completes and from that we are going to take the sequence of the other motion. So, that is why these types of circuits are referred to as sequencing circuits. So, let me uh, brief without this once again, I will repeat this because this is a very critical circuit, so you have to understand as you press the start PB, so you are going to create A plus first. So, A plus because you are already B naught is at the home position, it is already placed. So, you will be passing the air to this port and you will be making A plus using this signal of the B naught. So, once this moves, it hits the A1 cylinder uh, limit switch. So, and uh, A1 means this, so this gets pressed, so that gets pressed means this line gets connected and this also makes the forward, this also makes the forward. So, you have done A plus, B plus, then you need to do A minus, B minus. So, uh, as it moves forward, it hits B1, so B1 is here, here, so B1 gets pressed. So, we are connecting this path now to the reset port of the first valve. So, that is 1, 2. So, it retracts the cylinder A. So, we are going to create A minus. So, this is your third sequence and as you do, we are again moving back to A naught. A naught is here. So, here. So, A naught get pressed and once the A naught get pressed, so this gets changed 
here connects here and that allows the air to this port and that is a reset signal for this valve, resets the earlier position and moves the cylinder back to the this. So, A plus, B plus, A minus and B minus. So, this is how we are achieving the sequence using the four limit switches in this circuit. As I told, in the cylinder sequencing circuits, we can also use more than two cylinders. As per the requirements of the industry, we can have multiple cylinders, but uh, we, we do not suggest uh, not more than three, not more than three. If you are creating a motion more than six, three cylinders, so, instead of that you can go to a robot. So, uh, now such one example I am showing here, motion diagram uh, for a, an application which has a clamping, stamping and then ejecting. So, clamping, stamping, ejecting. What is this? If I say this, there are in this figure you can see there are three cylinders, one is this. So, this is your cylinder A and this is your cylinder B and this is your cylinder C. So, cylinder A is pushing the parts onto the place where the work has to be done. So, and then uh, some work is happening and some work is happening and once the work is happening, the cylinder B is working. So, we are giving a work clamping work to cylinder A, stamping work to cylinder B. After the completion, we are making the uh, part push by a cylinder C. So, cylinder C ejects the workpiece, moves the workpiece to the down for a bin. So, that means you take the material in, put in the place, work and then eject and send to a, a, a bin. So, this is how the many industries uses these kinds of configurations in multiple uh, production environments. So, this is an example case only, there can be a, a different small changes with respect to the operations and sequence with uh, three cylinders also. But when you take like this, in some cases, even with the two cylinders and uh, more than two cylinders, there is always a chance or risk of one thing called signal overlapping. So, you have to understand what is a signal overlapping. In my next slide, I will tell you what is signal overlapping and uh, from there we will start. So, I am saying signal overlapping. What is this signal overlap? This is nothing but we are trying to give a simultaneous signal to a particular valve. So, this control valve has set and reset ports. So, if the both the signals comes at the same time, if the both the signals comes at the same time, means you are asking the valve to set and also on the other side you are asking it to reset. So, what it has to do? It gets confused. Let me tell you an example uh, of the day to day life, some examples we will take. A, a, as a joke, I will take this example now. Take consider uh, a case of a person who has a girlfriend and a wife kinds of thing. So, if both comes together, then the firing will start, the personal the person will not behave properly. So, there will be ignition of firing from both sides and he cannot work. In the same manner, in such situations, the valve will not be able to work efficiently. If the signal overlap lap, lapping occurs, the valve will not work. So, if the valve does not work properly, means your process gets disturbed, stops in the middle. Till we reset that after finding the fault, so the process idle time will be there. So, such we need to avoid such mistakes when we design circuits. In order to do that, you have to understand how do we avoid the such signal overlap. It is easy. As a human beings, the person what uh, I have told, may be doing n number of things. 
in one time he may be saying delaying the second one to come second signal to come so or sometimes he himself move fast out of the situation so lots of such practical things is been done in the same manner we can also adopt some methodology to avoid the signal overlap so in this slide i am showing how to avoid or eliminate signal overlapping signal elimination so this is overlapping signal elimination you can use idler return lever limit switches they are the mechanical limit switches which are provided with a kind of mechanisms to delay the pressing of the roller so again we are adjusting the time of press which is delayed little compared to the direct roller so means one gets pressed fast and the other one comes late little pressing action comes late little so we are delaying that so this signal leaves and that signal will come so in that way we can also use a no timers or timers basically you can set a time of delay little late so that with such 2 seconds or 3 seconds or 5 seconds delay the other signals will come so quick steppers can be used so this is a, like you move the fast first signal to fast so quick steppers the one more important method that we use is cascading method in the cascading method what we are doing is we are creating a separate lines and we supply the air in the different lines at different conditions to avoid the signal overlap so for example i'll tell you example to this in the uh, european countries you can find the lanes which are 200 speed lines for a vehicle and 150 80 like that they never cross each other so here also we will not allow the signal simultaneous over possible overlapping signal uh, to come we change that different roads for the different guy so there won't be any confusion that the signal gets overlapped you are completely eliminating the such possibilities so uh, i'll explain this in the future slide and the one more method is stepper sequencer modules can be used so with all these you can avoid your signal overlapping or you can say you can eliminate the signal overlapping by using any of these devices i conclude i conclude here with this example cases and we will now in the next slide we will take Uh, uh in the next class we will take uh, develop a circuit which uh, do the signal uh, elimination in the circuit some of the case studies industry case studies and we uh, explain such case studies for you to make you to understand clearly what is signal elimination and how we, one can use the signal elimination methods in designing areas thank you